Good afternoon, everybody. Hell's Unicorn here again. And this is going to be just me venting a good amount of frustration that I've encountered over the past week. This is the same frustration that I encountered back in the latter days of 2007 going into 2008, 2008 when I was trying to do some across-the-aisle campaign work for Ron Paul and trying to get so-called left-leaning progressives to support him because of his uh, consistent stances on foreign policy, civil liberties, anti-corporatism, all this stuff. And I encountered the same idiocy that I've been encountering the past week. And, you know, sometimes I just wonder why I even try. It's a different kind of frustration than what you get when you deal with neocons. Neocons are just ignorantly stupid. They just don't get it. They they don't understand that continuing to drop bombs indiscriminately all over a bunch of places, hoping that you hit a few Al-Qaeda people, isn't going to get you anywhere. I understand that kind of stupidity. But the kind of stupidity that I tend to get out of progressives is something that I find much more heinous, or at least I've found it much more heinous lately. Because these people should know better. These are people that actually pay attention when they attend college courses, and they form some sort of a rudimentary understanding of how things like economics work, and they have, a, they have some sort of a education of modern American history, and so they understand the problems with Vietnam, with the Korean War, you know, I mean, you go all through history and you will find admissions and concessions that various presidents both democrat and republican got us involved in all these wars or whatever but the minute that you attempt to talk to them about supporting ron paul you tend to get three different reactions the most common reaction i get and the one that really just eats me up is the whole, he's in the wrong party nonsense. I thought we were well beyond the bullshit of party politics in this country. I thought that after seeing Barry, President Barry Satoro drag us into yet another war and still keeping the other two going and allowing the CIA to just bomb all these different countries, I thought we were beyond this notion that one party is more likely than the other to field a status quo candidate that's going to change that. Ron Paul is a member of an established party, and he's having to fight that established party at every turn possible. He is a de facto third party candidate. He just can't run as a third party party candidate because if you run as a third party candidate, you lose. That's something else that that first group doesn't understand. When you run in the Green Party, when you run as a Libertarian, when you run in the Constitution Party, you run in the Natural Law Party, or the other 175 parties that exist in this country, you lose. All right? You lose. You are a loser. I don't like saying that about Ralph Nader because I have a level of respect for him, but he is a loser. The guy ran as a Democrat, he probably would have gotten a lot further, and he probably would have shaped the debate a lot more. If we had a different electoral system, where it was easier for third-party candidates to get access to debates and to get onto ballots, I wouldn't be so rough on them. But as it stands right now, these people are losers. And part of the reason why they are losers is because all of you so-called anti-war progressives who constantly bitch that Obama is doing this wrong and that wrong and that wrong, you're going to vote for him again in 2012. And I'll tell you why you're going to vote for him in 2012. The same reason that you voted for John Kerry in 2004, even though he was pro-war, and the reason why you voted for Barack Obama the last time around, even though there were plenty of people like me telling you that he was lying his ass off to you when he said he was going to draw down the militarism, and when he was going to close down Guantanamo Bay and stop all the torture. 
Nothing's changed there, and nothing's going to change there. But this whole party politics mentality, it's just a lost cause. Don't tell me that. When I see posts from you guys saying, why is Ron Paul a Republican? I'm going to respond as, because that is what he ran as. Didn't you get the memo? That's the only response you can give to that. The reason why I have actually joined the Republican Party is because I am trying to help take it over. It's a party that's been greatly weakened. It's established. Neocon base is disillusioned right now, and they are ripe for being taken over. The Democrats are not ripe for being taken over. You want to know why Ron Paul is not running as a Democrat or why I think he shouldn't? It's because if he did, he would lose in the primary automatically. The Democrats are very particular about how they do their primaries, and they make sure that rabble-rousers like Howard Dean don't get very far. He'll get a middle-level or a high-level position that doesn't really do much, and all of you will settle down. That's what happened with the Howard Dean anti-war movement. You capitulated. You agreed to be broken and to be tamed and to become a willing and useful tool and asset of the Democratic Party establishment. You are de facto pro-war. I don't, I'm not going to recognize any of you people as anti-war anymore if you say one thing, one thing positive about Obama. You're not anti-war. Don't want to hear it. You voted for the guy, you get his whole policy. The second group of people, the people that say, oh, Ron Paul doesn't have any kind of a degree in economics. He's not part of the academia establishment. He doesn't know what he's talking about. I really don't like this type either, in general, because I don't like most people in academia, because they gave us this mess. Academia created Obama, created the Bushes, created Clinton. All of these people go, went to Ivy League schools. Anyway, and then the third group of people are people that are addicted to this so-called social justice thing and they can't shut up about it. They'll say nice things about Ron Paul, but they'll say, oh, but he doesn't support the wealth redistribution. He hates the poor. You know something? Fuck you. All right? I'm tired of hearing that. The, the model of social justice that you're working from, and most of these people, just uh, from my end of things, most of them tend to be atheists. This mode of social justice is right out of late, uh, higher medieval period Roman Catholicism. It's serfdom. We're the serfs, and we have our lords, and we have our king. It's a fiefdom. We don't own anything. We pay taxes just on owning things. So... On that count alone, we don't own things. I live on a 23-acre farm. I have to pay either a certain amount of property taxes or I have to do something particular on this farm in order to pay less of those property taxes. Ergo, I'm being told what to do with what is allegedly my own property. Bullshit. I have to conform to all of these ridiculous arbitrary zoning laws. I have tribunals at both the local, state, and federal level telling me what I can and can't do in the privacy of my own fucking home. I don't own my property. Nobody owns their own property in this country anymore. Well, some people do allegedly, I would say, probably some of the upper tier on Wall Street and the people that have cozy positions in government, I would say they owe their, own their own property. That a General Electric owns his business. I mean, he doesn't pay any taxes on it. And he has the ability to hire out entire news stations like MSNBC to lie to people and to tell them that they should pay their share when he's not paying his. And it just goes on and on down the line. Your entire political ideology is built on a lie. And it's the lie that this so-called political party that you're constantly doing the legwork for gives a damn about the poor. And, and while we're on the subject of the poor, let me just mention something for everybody's just general reckonridge. 
Over 90% of the so-called poor people in this country, as of a survey in 2005, own refrigerators and microwaves and uh, other amenities that uh, we generally take for granted. Yeah, they, they really, oh, they have it so tough. Oh, it's, it's just so tough, man. You know, I mean, those people that are starving to death and have quasi-core and their bellies are bulging out and ready to burst from the lack of uh, certain nutrients in Ethiopia, uh, the people in the Middle East that are, you know, constantly having to search around for uh, water reservoirs out in the desert, life and death depends on whether or not they can find an oasis. There's people in China who basically get arrested or killed depending on what religion they belong to. Or better yet, the people in Burma that you see floating down the lake because they had the bad luck of being in the wrong place at the wrong time at the hands of the benevolent government of that country. Oh, no, no. Those, those people are a bunch of whiny pansies. They, they, they don't know what real suffering is. They've got to come to America to learn about what suffering is. And they have to have their, their free uh, food stamps and their microwave ovens and their refrigerators and their air conditioning and their personal computers. Man, that is just so tough. Oh, it's so tough. My contention, both in terms of foreign policy and also in domestics, is that I want to be free. I don't care how much stuff I have. If the stuff doesn't belong to me, I don't really have it. It's a loner from the benevolent and almighty Uncle Sam, who you guys worship so fucking much. There's always exception to the rule of this stuff. But I see less and less of it the closer we get to campaign time. The Obama bots are coming back out. They're done complaining. It's time for them to obey and be good little soldiers and to make sure that their guy gets reelected. You know, the thing in Libya, you know, something that's bad, they oppose it, but we're going to say okay to it anyway. Because we've got CEOs in Fortune 500 companies that we think are going to get punished if we reelect this asshole. They're not going to. He's not going to punish them. They're going to buy him off just like they did last time. Look at where Obama's largest donors came from. General Electric, Goldman Sachs, down the line, all of these people that hosed all of you guys. You are useful idiots. That is what you are, and that is what you will continue to be until you pull your heads out of your asses. I've made it a regular practice now of blocking people that fall into these three categories if they come onto my channel spewing this nonsense because I'm tired of hearing it. As far as I'm concerned, these people are intellectually reprobate. And they're not going to do what we hope they, they would do. They'll say nice things about Ron Paul, but they're not switching parties to support him in the primary. You guys want to spend time doing something that actually counts? Talk to your Tea Party buddies and convince them that the Patriot Act is an abomination. Go to the Southern Avengers uh, YouTube channel. He has a very good video that I'm going to link to that explains exactly how you debate with conservatives and how you convince them that Ron Paul's ideas are the actual conservative ideas and not the Bush doctrine or the neocons doctrine or any of this other crap. Anyhow, that's about it for me. I think I've said my piece on this matter. With prudence to myself and benevolence to all of you, Good evening.